Hello everybody, my name is Jacob from the Dry Paint Pot and welcome back to Hobby Mistakes, the show where I make all the mistakes with my models so you don't have to. Now today's episode is going to cover the four easy steps to properly building your models, so stick around. Now in the last few weeks, we've learned how to break down our models into layers, we've learned which materials are good and bad for basing, and we learned how to build some awesome lava bases. But today's episode is going to get down into the meat and potatoes of this hobby. Potatoes! We're going to get our models ready for painting. And for most of us, that's what this is all about. That's the best part. So let's jump right into things. Now miniature prep can be broken down into four easy steps. Remove the bits from the sprue clean up any mold lines, wash the model, and glue. And to do these things, we're gonna need the following tools. An X-Acto knife or sharp blade, flat head clippers, sandpaper or emery board, and super glue. Now everything else that we'll be using for this video should be things that are normally just sitting around your house, like soap. And if you don't have soap for this tutorial, please pause the video Go to your local store and buy some freaking soap, you filthy animal. That's disgusting. Ew. So the very first thing that we need to do is figure out what our model is made out of. Now I know that sounds really random, but the type of material that your model is made out of dictates what tools you're gonna need to properly put it together. Now we want this prep process to be perfect because something like a forgotten mold line or a bad base coat can ruin your future paint job and waste hours of your time. Now the three most common materials that you run into are plastic, metal, and resin. Now let's get these bad boys prepped. Now I think that metal models are the most difficult to work with. While I do appreciate how heavy and durable they are, they just come with so many setbacks. When on a sprue, which are these things that hold your pieces together, the metal bits are very difficult to both separate and clean up. Separating these pieces will surely dull your blades over time and possibly dent and ruin your clippers. I tend to try and bend the bit off of the sprue, but it comes with the risk of ruining the bit. Also, metal bits are very difficult to glue together, and you're going to end up having to do something called pinning, but we'll get into that later. Now resin models are a lot easier to work with, but they do have their own setbacks. Now unlike metal bits, resin bits are so much easier to remove from the sprue. All you're going to need are some flat head clippers, and make sure that you line them up as close to the model as you can, and just snip. And it's as easy as that. Cutting the bit as close as you can to the sprue is going to leave you with minimal cleanup later on. Now while resin is easy to cut through, it has a lot of contact points to the sprue, which means a ton of cleanup later on. So be prepared for that. Now just a side note, you can remove these bits from the sprue by using a sharp blade or an X-Acto knife, but it is very dangerous. Before I had clippers, I'd use my X-Acto knife to cut the contact points, but when I did that, they'd end up shooting off my desk and sometimes flying across the room. I also broke two blades in the process, one of which flew right past my eye, so keep that in mind if you're gonna give it a shot. Now, one of the perks of metal models is that at least in my experience, I've noticed that they have very little mold lines, so there's really not too much to clean up. Now for this, all you're going to need is either an X-Acto knife or a file. I usually use a file so I don't dull my blade, and all you need to do is scrape away any excess pieces that were left from the sprue. Now this is the part of resin modeling that I hate the most. 
resin models always have a ton of mold lines and contact points. Now these are everywhere on resin models, so be sure to inspect every piece very carefully before you glue and prime. On the bright side, resin models are known to have much better detail than both metal and plastic models, so the extra time is kind of worth it in the long run. Now resin dust is some nasty stuff, and if you're going to sand away any of the mold lines, be sure to wear a mask. Now cleaning up mold lines on plastic models is the easiest. There are usually very few mold lines and the plastic is very easy to trim and sand down. Now while there are many tools out there that help you cut away mold lines, you can always just angle your X-Acto knife and scrape away at the lines. It's really just the easiest thing to do. Now the next step is optional for plastic and metal models, but it's crucial for success with resin. Now, I'm no chemist, but a friend of mine who professionally casts resin models explained that they're made by mixing one part resin and one part hardener, and then letting that mixture sit in a pressure pot until fully cured. Now, to get the models out safely from the mold, there's usually a release agent. It's kind of like greasing the inside of a pan before you bake, and that release agent sometimes leaves a residue on resin models. Now we want to wash these models because an imbalance of the resin mixture and the release agent will actually reject our primer and our paint. So much so that your primer will stay sticky and your paint will actually beat off of the model. And that's awful to work with. Trust me, I've done it a ton of times. I get so used to working with plastic models and just going outside and priming them that I forget that resin models are different and require special care. Now to save ourselves from a future headache, we're going to give this slant a bubble bath. Now that our bits are clipped and clean, we get to glue them together. Now I do suggest not gluing everything down at once because it'll make things a lot easier for you when you start painting. For instance, I won't glue my salon to his seat until both he and it is painted. If I did, it would make painting behind him nearly impossible because he's very fit. Starting with metal, you can usually get away with using a basic super glue to join your pieces together. Be sure not to use any poly cement glue also known as plastic glue, because as the name states, it's meant for plastic. This stuff literally melts together the two pieces that are joined and won't do you any good on metal. Now, some of your metal models will be too heavy to glue together and will require something called pinning. Now this is done by drilling a small hole in the two pieces that you want to put together, gluing in a small piece of metal like a paper clip, and then joining those pieces. Now, I would personally show you how to do that but I just don't have any metal models on me that require any pinning. But once I get my hands on some, I'll be sure to make a video on it and I'll post it up here as soon as possible. As for plastic and resin, there's nothing special about gluing them together. Simply put a dot of glue down and push the pieces together until they stick. That's all I can say. And there you have it. Our models are prepped and ready to paint. I really hope this video answered any of your questions that you had on building your models. And if it didn't, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. And as always, feel free to share any of your work with me at the Dry Paint Pot, both on Instagram and Facebook. Now wash your brushes, clean your paint pots, and keep on painting.